Hey, you can unlock your phone with your ear now. And Ikea has shown us what a kitchen in 2025 might look like. Oh, and a little military company called DARPA has invented homing bullets. So that's not terrifying. It's tomorrow daily. <laughs> Greetings, citizens of the internet. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm Ashley Skeva. Joining me as always, Kale Anonymous. Day of, whoa, you just, I thought you pointed that gun at me with the guided <laughs> bullets. I wouldn't need to actually, I mean, I'd have to point it at you, but then you could run away and it would still hit you. I'm totally gonna jump ahead and be like, that is exactly like the ZF-1 from The Fifth Element. It's, this is insane. Uh, but we'll get there, that's. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah. In fact, let's get there right now. This oh. is the headlines. Someone asked, by the way, really quick, if we could show what we do during these transitions. They're like, can you show what you guys are doing during the transitions? And I'm like, you don't want to see that. Yeah, you don't. I got like <laughs> plates back here. Idiots. I take a stick out and I spin the plates. I have and a then steak. I bounce a ball on my nose. I have a steak and I like I just take a big bite of steak. You eat steak on the break. Yep. Yeah. I gotta That's keep my I gotta keep my energy levels up. Yeah, my I get iron. those proteins. Okay. Gotta so this isn't in. the news story, but no, uh, this is the news story. So DARPA apparently now has homing bullets, bullets that can change trajectory mid mid sh shot which is pretty scary. Uh, this is from DARPA TV, the video that we're watching. Um, so here's how it works. <laughs> this is DARPA's um, <laughs> Exacto, which is short for Extreme Accuracy Task Ordinance, which is a very good name. Um, now allows these uh, target locking bullets to hit a target after it starts moving. So before they had these, uh, they were working on bullets that could change path midair to sort of adjust for wind or you know other elements things like that um but now it can actually and, and hit a still target but now these are uh hitting moving okay targets. so the the what footage you were seeing before was an actual pro guy a trained sniper and this is just some idiot this is just some untrained a, bozo like me or you uh using the exacto program. no i'm on the pro side but still that's crazy it's a little nuts and that's so, scary it's a 50 caliber bullet which is not exactly a small bullet um, and it alters its path as it sort of cuts through the air to strike a targeted motion. A DARPA, to be fair, DARPA has not exactly explained how this works. Yeah. They're not, uh, I would imagine for confidentiality reasons, um, top secret, you know, how it works and everything. They're not, they're not exactly being super forthcoming about the exact technology. Yeah. Uh, however, I was looking on Reddit at, uh, all of the commenters and we all know Reddit is full of experts. And so, um, there were a lot of actual people saying things like, well, it could be, uh, optical, um, there could be things like optical sensors, low megapixel cameras, or motors and fins on the bullet that make corrections uh, from a computer that's mounted on the rifle. Sounds like a very expensive bullet. Very expensive bullet, I would imagine. Very expensive. Um, not cheap at all, which, you know, might help it not get into uh, the hands of just like me and you. It would be bad. I don't think I have a 50 caliber rifle laying around. No, 3D print it, and there you 3D go. 3D print your 50 yeah. caliber rifle. That's a terrible idea. Um, so yeah, the, the trained sniper hit his target, and then an untrained sniper hit the exact same target. So uh, I don't know what that says, uh, whether that is the scariest thing ever, or really, really cool that they developed it, or maybe both. Scare sighting, as we like to say. No, not not scare sighting. Scary. Scary. It's terrifying. Yeah. Um, so they're Which saying, is like cool for the like military, you know, buffing me. I'm just like cool. Yeah. Laser guns, tracking bullets, and, and the ZF-1 from Fifth Element. Well, it makes me laugh because I always think of like people with their aimbots. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, this is an aimbot in real life. Hacksaws over here. This yeah. is hacks. Okay, gotcha. DARPA is saying that the point of this is to improve sniper effectiveness and enhance troop safety because it increases the time that you can be in a position. Uh, here's the exact word. Expanding target engagement timelines. So cool. the time in which you would need to sort of Plus engage a target. Plus you get a, a really good shave too. Like, mm, <laughs> yeah, real yeah. close. No, but I get, I get it. This is, this is Scary. helpful. Scary. Helpful. Is it, I bet it, you a pro, a pro sniper is probably real mad right now. Yeah, I mean, I think you pro snipers out there who have worked very hard for that training are probably really annoyed. Um, but that actually, so it Brings is. Brings us to our hashtag of the day? Yeah, here's the, here's the thing. So. What we, would you like to? No, 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 okay. no. Who would you, you like to shoot? No, that would be terrible. Um, this is terrifying. Like, I'm really scared of stuff like this. And especially when you think about, like, sentient robotics, like, coming. Like, if that ever happens, oh, the, yeah. they could use these to just shoot us. Like, if so, the T-1000 got a hold of this stuff. No bueno. Yeah. No good. Um, so my 
query to you and you, the viewer, is to use the hashtag TDBullets. And please put a happier spin on this because I don't want to die of terror tonight in my sleep. Uh, it's a it's a guided tic tac, and Ooh. it's for people have bad breath, and you know that that guy's on a date over there, like and you're like he's gonna go in for a kiss later. And I saw him eating garlic steak, like you do like on the I break, do. Mm -hmm. and you shoot it, and it goes <laughs> and it, while he's talking. You gotta time it though. That's the only problem. And then it goes right into his mouth. Well, the tic tac smart breath. has optical sensors on it, so, oh, it, can so go it just kind of right hovers. His mouth. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there you go. There's my delightful spin on it. I like it. Well, you did that that really great. Hatred <clears throat> parody where you did. Yep. I'm the, good at that. I'm good at good. making really Scary. mean, evil things into like really delightful, charming, delightful, yeah. charming so things. Do you have one for those? Uh, I would like it. To, I would like just like a just like a magician where they change like their magic wand into a flower. I would like it to just shoot out a bouquet of roses to people. Oh, okay, yeah, that's nice. So like it's it looks like a bullet, and then when it gets to you, it like goes poof, and it's like flowers. <laughs> So it's like terrorists, and then all of a sudden it goes, flowers. they're like, no, poof. Love you. And they're just yeah. like, oh, you know what, you're right. I love you, too. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. That so what is good. it, TD guns? TD bullets. TD bullets. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, So that's, cool. Uh, we're going to make that a happier thing. So let's let's turn this frown upside down, guys. Yeah. Um, tell me about a... Uh, speaking of earlock. Kind of, yeah, speaking of earlock, I know, I just said that. I'm going for, I'm going for worse transition. So we all know <laughs> that tough. there's new ways to unlock your phone now What with, you know, the finger touch scan and everything. Yeah. It's a new way of not having to enter in a passcode. Well, over at Yahoo Labs, they've introduced a new technology which they hope to, to make available, and this is EarLock. Now, this is basically a, uh, a scanner that you put up to, it's, it's recognized through your screen, and it recognizes the shape of your ear. So it's basically taking a much larger sample. Okay. Okay, that's basically the, the gist of this. It's, it's taking it from a larger sample. Now, why is this important? Oh, we already have the biometric scanner. Yeah, we already have touch ID. We already why have do we that. Need, well, why do we need? Because the biometric scanner uh, takes up a lot more room, whereas the, this, the ear scanner is already, like that technology is already in the phone. So it's okay, cheaper. Okay, so, because the screen's there, because it's using the screen, right? Yeah, okay. It's already it's already cheaper. It's already there, so you could put it in a lot more phones for a lot less. Less money, right? Okay, so emerging markets. Mm -hmm. This is like a thing for people who are not buying iPhone sixes and yeah. Galaxy S five. This is this is the Get future. S6. This is the future for low, more low end phones and, and more phones adapting this without having to increase their costs. Right. Okay. So giving giving people who have lower end phones or access to lower end phones the ability to sort of unlock their phone using biometrics. Yes. Cool. Uh, so they're they're saying that they're they're using the body print they were able to do 99.8 uh, authentic precision. Wow. So they 99.8% of the time it, it knew it was you. Mm -hmm. That is impressive. I really like that. Wow, that's cool. Yep. So so what are they going to do? Like, what are they going to do next? So they're already working on this. They have really good, I mean, obviously really good testing results, but I would imagine probably not that many people have used this yet. Like, are they going to do it with more? Yeah, they're, they're going to improve the uh, recognition algorithms, and uh, they're going to test it on a larger scale. But, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, being able, it's so much safer to be able to have that data on your device as opposed to putting a passcode in or... You know, because that stuff can be cracked. And so, obviously, a screen like that wouldn't be able to read, like, the little tiny lines on your finger. Yeah. But if you could, you know, fist bump your phone or whatever, you're like, hey. That fist bump one looked not very it, accurate. But the ear one kind of makes sense. But maybe but it's the, the fist exact bump one. sort of shape of your fist that sort of remembers it. So maybe that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. But the My ear one is, is awesome. Yeah, yeah. The, the ear, ear one, one really the, ear, cool. the ear one is pretty cool. So over at Yahoo Labs, like they're it. they're trying to get that accessible to 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 more phones. So that's that we, awesome. Because I don't have that on my phone. No, so and you I could have like it that. right in there on your phone. Yeah, so I don't have to remember a passcode every time. What is it, three? <sighs> it's, yeah, so many. Do you, know. um, do you want to hear about the kitchen of the future? Uh, yeah, of it's, course. The video is pretty cool. Okay, so this is a project, a student project that IKEA sort of helped collaborate on and then also Idio Designs, which is a London design firm. Um, they did this concept kitchen 2025. So they asked some students uh, from two European universities to answer the question, what will kitchens be like in 2025? It looks pretty standard, right? Looks yep. like kind of like a little Ikea kitchen. That it looks you like see. a hardware, but yeah, it looks like a hardware garage. A little garage, bit like a hardware okay. store, yeah, okay. Um, and uh, they, they gave them some parameters. They said, uh, in designing this kitchen, keep things in mind. Keep in mind that in 10 years, we're going to make some assumptions about the world. There's going to be an aging population, fewer children. Smaller living spaces, food scarcity. We might see meat be a little bit more scarce. 
around the world. Uh, and also recycling would be almost required. So they gave them a, some sort of rules to kind of go by. Those are good. Those are good rules because I think those are pretty good predictions for, yeah. the, for the next 10 years. So um, they displayed this and uh, attempted to make the tech inside the kitchen really subtle. So they were like, okay, we want to make this subtle. We want to make it something that is familiar to modern eyes like us, right, current eyes, but something that we would also get a lot out of in the future in, in 10 years. So um, they also wanted to blend in workspace tech. So here's what they did. They have this really awesome smart table, and the table has induction in it, so you're able to heat up different pieces of the table. Now, again, this is not real. It's all it, it's a design. It's a concept. This is just total conjecture. Um, but there's also a camera that is above and, and uh, pointing down at the table and then also projection technology. So you can see there's like little um, tra trails for the kid pushing his car. Now, somebody puts tomatoes on there. Okay, well, uh, I also have this. So, okay, here's some things I can make with those items together. If you bring them, push them together, Okay, well, here's these things that I can make. Here's these two recipes that, that I have That is so available. good for like a bachelor that doesn't know how to cook stuff. It's really awesome. Um, and also for just like, oh, I have some leftover of this and some leftover of this. Like, what can I do with this? And so you can put it together and, oh, here's what we can make. So they also have lots of different things. Like they have these, um, these sort of magazines. They have, uh, they were saying that what, one of the things they want to do is um, they want to do timers. They want to be able to do... Uh, a thing where you can recharge your phone. They want to show you how to slice things, how to how to do everything. Um, they say, okay, well, I want to start heating up one of these pots. Like, okay, here's we're gonna make pancakes. Like, so here's this video. They said pancakes. Okay, two eggs. Here's the milk. We're measuring it inside the projection, and then also the flour. And then once that's done, you mix it together, and then it heats up a specific part of the wood for induction, and you can make your pancakes. That's really cool, but. The HoloLens could probably do this too. I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. And that's thing. here this year. Yeah, I just I, <laughs> no. I, I like the induction thing though. It's, I, it could like be that. really dangerous, but so so. What were the workarounds for like the meat and the? Did so, they have anything? So I think part of that kitchen was like they see. Okay, so here you go. So it, you'd move it to a specific part of the the range. It would and show it would you where to move to, it and it would okay. say, this is where, yeah, this is where you need to move it to. Here's, And then they would heat it up to a specific temperature or whatever, and then you'd put your stuff in there and it would cook it. <laughs> cool. So, um, so yeah, I thought that was really neat. And they also have this really cool um, That would shelving. work for space, too, because uh, ultimately we're going to start running it. Like, if you running live in a city, like, you're going to... Tight spaces. Think about it, New York. Yeah. Like, if you could just not have that count, like a counter and a stove, you just you have could work a counter. That workspace. They, and they also made it a workspace. So they were saying they have, like, you put your coffee down, and it would keep your coffee warm just in that little tiny spot. You put your phone down, you'd slide it onto the charging station. It cool. would, by induction, charge your phone. They have all these different things you could do. Like, there was this, the, uh, this kid's drawing something, and then they're going to bring it to life with the projection and then be able to, like, fling it around the table and -uh. stuff. So, um, yeah, I thought this was really neat. I thought it was a really good idea. I mean, obviously, it's very lofty. This is not something we'll probably see in 10 years. But, but um, IKEA's kitchen and dining range manager says that the project will be used in future product uh, development. So maybe we'll see sort of echoes of these types of things and go going forward in the future. Pretty cool. Really, IKEA? Maybe. Really? You're going to make some super high-tech stuff? We might see, like, some projection stuff that would be kind of cool. Hmm. But, you know, they could, maybe IKEA will do something in conjunction with HoloLens. Maybe they'll say, we are working with Microsoft to bring you the kitchen of the future. That's something I could definitely see happening. Just usually when I think of the lowest end of furniture, no offense, IKEA, I love you, that's, I think of IKEA. So if they make that big step, that would be awesome. That would be cool. Like if they're making like affordable, super high tech type type of stuff, I'm in. There could be partnerships. So I mean, that's a thing that may or may not happen in the future. But I just thought it was really neat. Wanted to show it to that's you. That's a cool contest. It was like for students or they just. It wasn't even a contest. They just said we want to do this design project for students. They picked students from two different universities, and they said here are sort of the the assumptions about life in ten years that we you'll have to deal with. Uh, go forth and create the kitchen of the future. What's That's the very cool. I'm, I'm behind that. That's yeah. super cool. I liked it right a lot. On. All right, guys, that is it for our headlines. Uh, we will be right back. It is uh, Tuesday, so it's time for new releases, and there's a pretty big one this week And then uh, no. that I'm sure you're all familiar with. And then, of course, we have your user feedback and our photographer for the day, so don't click away. It's Tomorrow Daily. Oh, and watch these uh, humans as cats in viral videos. <laughs> I'm a kitty cat. 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 I'm a kitty cat.
Welcome back to the show. We're just shaking our fists at the sky at beautiful drone footage. Very frustrating, very annoying. We should have a drone in this studio do some, some overhead footage for us. Logan is a drone, though. He is, drone is Logan is actually a flying drone. He is a sentient flying. Right, Logan? Unmanned aerial. <laughs> unmanned aerial vehicle. That's that's what Logan is. We haven't told you guys yet. I'm sorry. Secrets out. Cats out of the bag. Uh, you know it's Tuesday. I know you love Tuesdays because it's time to talk about all the fun things that we're going to be checking out this week. So it's new releases. There's nothing coming out this week. Sorry. All right, so now we go to user Bummer. feedback. Just kidding. Um, this week, if you, this has been a long time coming. Uh, the adventure, the adventure game from Double Fine. That's where you're gonna start Broken with. Broken Age. Broken right. Age Act Two just dropped. Oh, this Double week. Fine. So yeah. Double yeah, Fine yeah. fangirl. Listen, I bought a goggle or shirt. It's coming in the end, at the end of May. I'm very excited. I'm not 100 percent sure what that is. Psychonauts. Oh. Um. So. This is the second act to the Double Fine Adventure, which was backed on Kickstarter. It, they asked for 400000 They got like $3.3 million. Elijah Wood voices one of the main characters. Um, finally, act two oh, this drops. Looks amazing. It's a really good. Apparently, from what I have heard, I haven't played it yet. I downloaded it last night, but didn't have time to dig into it. But I played the first half. It's a gorgeous, uh, it's a gorgeous puzzle game. It's, it reminds me of all the best old kind of point-and-click adventure games. Um, it's great, and uh, but the other thing is, is that it's also really freaking hard sometimes. Like it's, it can be really tough. The puzzles are really tough. As a, as someone who plays a lot of point yeah. and click, it's even hard for you. Yeah. So it, there are some, there are some things in this because uh, so you switch back and forth between the girl and the boy. Like their their characters, they have different stories that kind of crash together at the end of the first act. I don't want to give anything away, but they crash together at the end of the first act, and then in the second act, as far as I'm aware, you're going to spend a lot of time kind of going back and forth between them to sort of catch little clues and, like, subtle references to how to solve a puzzle on the other side of, like, the like you might be in oh, the wow. girl's world. Yeah, it's, like, That's really cool. crazy. So How many tough. acts are there? Just two. This is the second half oh, of the game. This is the end. Yeah, and apparently okay, this good. is twice as long as the first act, so a lot oh. of people are feeling, you know, pretty positive about it, so... Uh, Broken Age Act 2 is out uh, on Steam, so you can go pick that up on How Steam. Much? Um, you know, I don't know off the top of my head because I backed it, so they just, I'm, I've been waiting for it forever, okay. so um, I just got my little code or whatever for backing it. Um, yeah, full disclosure, I backed that on Kickstarter. And it's Shocker, I know. It's only on what? It's on uh, Steam. It's on PC. Oh, so hurry! They'll All right. also, uh, they'll also, I'm sure, release Broken Age now that it's like a full, complete game. They'll release it on other, other uh, cool platforms and all that. All stuff. right. Um, all right. And Broken Age fun. is also on. I think it's on iOS as well. So and Android. Okay. They have it up across a bunch of platforms because they raise so much money. Yeah. Uh, also, so that's the only release that's coming out this week. That's now we move it. to no, your no. user feedback. Dang it, Carol! No. Um, Tropico Five comes out if you're into Sims. If you're into Sim games, you ever play Tropico? <laughs> I did this on purpose, you know. I know, I it's, it's working, it's working. And I hope it's working. Uh, Tropico 5, look at how beautiful is this. It's just like SimCity. Oh my God. Get your Tropico My on. weekend is spent right yep. here. You're never going to do anything else this weekend. You're, you're going to be so excited about Tropico. You're going to launch your own little island and you're going to build it all out and it's going to be great. Yeah, Tropico is really good at making commercials. I don't know if you've seen the ads where it's like Stalin dancing. <laughs> it's crazy. Have you crazy. seen those? Those are really good. So this has been out actually for about a year, but it's finally out on PS4. So there were some people I saw online that were like, I'm right. excited. So this excited. is a so new release on PS4. Yeah, yeah, new All release right. on PS4. Cool. Um, okay, and then uh, that's, and that's it. it. That's Time it. Time for your We're user feedback. Done. No, it's the Avengers: Age of Ultron oh, comes out this weekend. That's of course. right. All of you, I'm sure, have already bought your tickets. This is an this. indie film. Uh, small, very small, very small budget. I'm really hoping that maybe it gets seen by somebody. I mean, seriously, limited. if you have not bought your tickets for this, you're screwed. Yeah, you're, you're not, not going. seeing it this weekend. I it's bought mine. It's selling out everywhere, at least in Los Angeles, from what yeah. I've looked at, even on the reserve seating places. But yeah, get your tickets now um, to go see this because you know it's, you're, it's definitely something you're going you, to you see. Because you want to see it. Yeah, you're going to want to see it. And I've heard, uh, Kill and I have both heard, maybe maybe don't see it in 3D. Maybe see it in 2D because Don't the transfer is not as good. Don't see it in 3D. That's what we've been hearing. But see, like, I still think if you're going to go see a movie like this, you need to see it like opening day or with the nerds. You need to see it when everybody's screaming and yeah. excited and Cheering, shouting. Because this is yeah, yeah, yeah. 
these, these are events. The, yeah. the Avengers aren't just like, oh yeah, I saw it Sunday at 4 p.m. was bored. Yeah. I was eating this bologna in my underwear. This is an experience film. This is a film you have to experience with other nerds. Go see it this weekend. Yep. Wait in a line if you have to. I got reserved seating. Find a theater with reserved seating. That's my favorite. I bought my tickets like last week. I don't think that's like a universal thing. No, it's not. But there are a lot of theaters switching over to that, which is cool. So that's I'm really like, I'm literally like middle center, dead center of the theater for like, and I, I bought them two weeks ago so I can walk in five minutes before the movie starts, sit down, and I'm good. Yeah, if you're awesome at procrastinating, you're going to have a terrible weekend. You're going to have a terrible time seeing Age of Ultron. You're going to be playing Tropico 5. That's what you're going to be doing. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, that bad. I think now it is <clears throat> actually time for user feedback. Avengers Age of Ultron's coming out this weekend. Robert Downey Jr. wrote in. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> you guys had some interesting things to say about Konami, so much so that uh, one of our users actually sent in a pretty long email, and I didn't want to condense it, so I'm actually going to read it on tomorrow's show. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll, we'll discuss, but it's Can a, I say one know. thing that I realized last night is that Silent Hill fans deserved Silent Hills. They did. Because we've been kicked through we've the mud so much. We've been through some bad so Silent Hills, much. guys. It, we've been fans of just like the core of the game and not an actually like solid one. And I'm stepping, like, I'm stepping out there. They haven't been amazing. They haven't been great, to be but, honest. But we deserved it. Can I give you a suggestion, an alternate? Maybe an alternate? Don't say Fatal Frame. I was going to say Fatal Frame. It's not going to cut it for me. I, I like Fatal really Frame. Good. I think it's going to be really good. This one, I feel, is going to be maybe the strongest Fatal Frame. This like, next could one? Could be up next with the first. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm sure, but Silent Hill is is actually in my DNA. I know, I know. You actually bleed samples. Silent Hill yeah. around. It's just really upsetting. Um, OK, so we got to talk about Konami. Yesterday, we asked you guys to use the hashtag TD Konami. Like I said, we're going to split it up into two days. We'll read your bullets. Your bullets, tweets, and tomorrow's tweets on Thursday's show. We'll do it all together. It'll be fine. Um, Michael wrote in. He tweeted us, and he said, as long as I get Metal Gear Solid, I'm happy. But my guess is they don't want to list any fiscal info with the SEC, TD cool. Konami. Okay. So um, that makes sense. So maybe they don't want to show that maybe they've been losing money. Maybe they want to tell U.S. markets that they, they're maybe not doing so hot. That might be a thing. Maybe they don't want to show revenues, um, things like that. Well, that again, their slot machine... Uh, their slot machine division is doing way better, so. So we'll talk about Woof. that tomorrow because there's, there like the guy who wrote in wrote a very long email and it's really good. And like I said, it was so interesting. I didn't want to cut it up. Um, so we'll read it tomorrow. But All right. Neil, financial advisor. Neil wrote in new, new dad, Neil, new dad, Gil, Neil, Gil, you know, our, our dad who wrote oh, in. Oh yeah. Fresh, fresh, fresh dad, Neil. Fresh dad. Neil, Neil wrote in says straight to the point. The whole traditional Japanese game market is in serious danger of becoming defunct. Some companies such as Square Enix and even Sega are adapting by using Western developers and business practices. Others, like Konami and Capcom, are slower to change. And I truly believe this is the reason companies are suffering. Konami in particular is failing because as crazy as Kojima is considered, he's one of the few Japanese developers that embraced Western culture and integrated it into his games. Konami wants the money but doesn't want to move away from the anime boobs and pachinko machines. Oh, those pachinko machines. First of all, pachinko machines are awesome. Yeah, no, he's, he's definitely right machines. about the whole, like, because, like, Suda51 never does that great anymore. No. Like, mm -hmm. Capcom, too. Like, he made a good point. Capcom and Konami are kind of in the same sort of boat where it's, like, they're kind of middling right now, and nobody really knows what's going to happen, and, you know, we'll see. Well, it's not like they've been really knocking it out of the park with their Resident Evil games. True. Exactly. You know, the HD remake, that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah. But that's a remake. I mean, give me something fresh. Give me something new. I don't want... I'm... I'm I, my... Nostalgia reserves are getting dangerously low. Like, I need some new stuff, guys. Like, I love, listen, I love adaptations of comic books. I, lo I love all these comic book shows and movies we're getting. I love all these, some of the remakes, they're okay, some. Uh, but, and like, and a lot of these, like, book adaptations, of it, great, like Hunger Games. But, guys, where's my new stuff? Like, I want something new. My nostalgia is low. I'm done. I, I don't have any left. I have no nostalgia excitement to give about things. It's fair. I'm going to have to ration out now. I have to so pick All that choose. indie games, all that indie game world. That's so. why I love indie games so mm -hmm. much. That's why I'm... I, that's why you're a Double Fine lady. That's why I, I enjoy what Double Fine does. Now, am I happy that it took them so long to get out a game that we gave three and a, three, almost three and a half million dollars to? Yes. No, no. No. Not super thrilled about that. No. But it is a really good game, and uh, I'd rather have it late than never. I'd rather have people making those games and being a little, and being late on the development cycle as opposed to never being able to have those games because they're so good. So there you go. 
Um, so that's it for user feedback. We'll get to the last Konami email tomorrow because it's really good. Um, OK, so that being said, we got to talk about our phone talker for the day. Sorry, I was doing stuff on the break. I know. Oh. He was, Kale also likes to rave during the break. He had his glow sticks out, but he threw mm -hmm. them right before we yep. came back. I had a spirit hood and everything. It was crazy. <laughs> I just love, can you please wear a spirit hood in tomorrow? Yes. Or, or Thursday? Maybe Thursday. Yeah, Thursday it comes off the rails. Yeah, do wait, it on Thursday. Thursday I'll wear a spirit hood. Carlos wrote in and said, <laughs> I took this picture of my city. I'm going to try really hard to pronounce this, Carlos. And don't make fun of me if I mess it up, OK? I'm going to give you a chance to do it, too, here. Uh, Tegu. Tegucigalpa, I think that's what it is. Tegucigalpa? Tegucigalpa? Is that what you got? You feel yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tegucigalpa? Tegu Tegucigalpa. OK. Tegucigalpa, Honduras, from my boyfriend's apartment using the panorama mode of my iPhone 6 Plus. Greetings from here. I love your show. So yeah, that's, that's Honduras. That's incredible. That looks so cool. I, like, I like how it's, you know, it's really, I like how it's so kind of urban and rural at the same time. Yeah. Like you get kind of that feeling that you're in a really, you're in a big city, but it's also kind of like people have space. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. That is a delightful picture, yeah, Carlos. Yeah, that's a great shot. Well done, sir. Well done. Uh, and if you would like to have your photography featured on the show, you can email it to us tomorrow at CNET.com. Tell us a little story about it. Tell us what device you took it with. Uh, and uh, might be on the show, might see it there. If you want to send over user feedback, you can email us or you can find us on social media. We are Tomorrow Daily on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tomorrow Daily TV on Google Plus, and we also have a Tumblr, so you can check that out. It's just tomorrowdaily.tumblr.com. And don't forget, we got a YouTube. You can like, favorite, and subscribe on there. And if you're listening to the iTunes podcast, we're in our ear and follow us on our personal Twitters, Kale Anonymous. And Ashley Skeva. And of course, you can send anybody to our show by giving them the www.tomorrowdaily.com address. It's just that easy. You sounded like an auctioneer. I felt like I should bid on like a steer? Steers? You another like steak? You You're going to get another steak for you to yeah. eat during the break? I'm hungry, okay, gotcha. guys. I'm hungry. Close the loop. We got it. Close it up, guys. Call back. End of the show. That's it. We're done. Tomorrow, back with new, weird, wonderful technology, science facts, science fiction, blowing up in your face. But until then, be good humans, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.